Our case study in this lab is quantum cryptography, the use of quantum mechanics to make unbreakable codes. Now, codes have been enormously important for all sorts of government purposes for a very long time. And when they are broken, they can lead to countries losing wars. So it's clearly a very important issue. The simplest code is a substitution cipher, where each letter is assigned a different letter or a number. So, for example, you could have A equals 1, B equals 2, C equals 3, etc. So if your message was a danger, that would be written as D is 4, A is 1, etc. So it would be a string of numbers. Now, these codes have been used since at least the time of Julius Caesar. They're very easy to encode, very easy to decode. The trouble is they are trivial to break because there's always a one-to-one -one match between a letter and a code. So A is always 1, D is always 4. What that means is in your message, there are going to be patterns. For example, the letter E is going to be much more common than the letter X. And so whatever number corresponds to E will be much more common than whichever one corresponds to X. Likewise, certain letters, for example, you get Q is often followed by U is an English message. And so if you find that whenever you get one symbol, whatever that one is, always followed by this one, it's a fair bet that's Q and U. So any code where there's always the same relationship between the letters or words and the code message is easy to break. So what can you do? Well, there is one in principle unbreakable code, which is called a one-time pad. The basic idea is you take your message, like danger, and that comes up as a string of numbers, but then you add a set of random numbers to it. So you come up with a group of random numbers, I don't know, say 3, 9, 7, 1, and you get your message, which is say case 4, 1, and you add them together. 4 plus 3 equals 7, 1 plus 9 equals 10, and so on. You have to wrap the numbers over if they get too high, but that's just a detail. You would send the sum of the random numbers plus the message to whoever you are trying to communicate with, and they would need to know the set of random numbers to decipher it. They would subtract the set of random numbers off the numbers you send them to get the numbers that form the code. The point is that what it means is that if you have two different letters A somewhere, so it might both be one, they're going to be added to a different number, and so here A might be 10, whereas here it might be 7. So if the set of random numbers here is truly random, then it means there is no pattern in the final signal, because one letter always comes out of something different, depending what the random number is. So this means that an enemy can intercept the final answer, and there'll be no patterns there to help them decipher it. There'll be no letters more common than any others, no particular combinations of letters found together. There is nothing they can use to try and f to crack the code. The only way you can crack the code is if you happen to know the set of random numbers that was added to it. So, unbreakable? Oh well, yes, even in principle. Unless you use the same string of numbers multiple times. The Soviets made the mistake of doing that during part of the Second World War, allowing the British to crack it. But as long as you only use the set of random numbers once for one message, hence the name one time pad, then it is unbreakable. The trouble is that you need a set of random numbers that are truly random. If there's any pattern in the sense of random numbers, uh, for example, one number is more common than another here, or there are certain patterns within it, then in principle, you could break it and find out what's going on. You probably have a random number generator on your calculator or on your computer, but those are not really random. They're what are called pseudo-random numbers. They're actually generated by a formula that makes them look random, but in fact, they're not. And to an enemy with enough computing power, they are trivially easy to crack. What you want is a bunch of truly random numbers to add up here, to combine with your actual message, to give you the coded message. And you need lots of random numbers because you're going to have to have a different pad for every different number. One way to do it would be to use some physical randomness. Computers basically can't do really random numbers because they obey instructions. And anything that obeys instructions is not going to be fully random. But you could, for example, roll dice. 
Once again, it's not truly random because which way up the dice falls will depend on exactly how it's thrown, the air current, the coefficient of friction with the table, things like that. And in practice, most dice will tend to land slightly more on one number than on another or have certain patterns in how you roll them. So they're probably not random enough for this because any pattern will allow someone to track this. So where can you get truly random numbers? Well, that's where quantum mechanics comes in. Quantum mechanics tells us that so-called empty space isn't really empty. You, every now and then you get a particle and an antiparticle produced. They fly through space and recombine. The so-called virtual particles are constantly appearing and disappearing. So empty space is actually a seething multitude of energies bumping around and particles appearing and disappearing. In the quantum optics lab here in physics, we're actually using this. We fire a laser beam into a bit of vacuum and use it to amplify the signal from the vacuum. You'd think there'd be no signal from a vacuum because there's nothing there. But no, there are these random quantum mechanical fluctuations. It amplifies them and sends out a set of random numbers at the end, which can be used for codes. And because these come from the actual fundamental randomness of space, there is no conceivable pattern in them. So that's what we're going to be talking about in today's lab.